Hello friends, today in this retaining wall part 3 video I will add an option to decide the thickness at the top and bottom of our retaining wall, making the thickness vary along its section length in of course addition to the slope feature. So we just jump right into it. Using my trusty epic pen I'm sketching up the cross section with the necessary points. This will help us highlight the key points and parameters needed to create our masterpiece. So the procedure is slightly different from the previous retaining wall videos where I created a dummy surface. Here I will first create a parametric section in the adaptive family template, nest it into another adaptive family template and load the entire wall when created in the fam uh, adaptive family template into the Revit main project. So the blue point here will be the adaptive point. This point I will connect to the top curve of the wall. The orange and pink points are reference points that operates in relation to the adaptive points. The X is the parameter for the thickness of the top of the wall and Y is for the bottom of the wall. The set decides the slope of our retaining wall. I'll be adding these parameters later. First up, creating a parametric cross section. A cross section I have already sketched up. Now it's time to create it with points. So creating adaptive geometry with points is the backbone of the adaptive family creation and where the magic is happening. Unlike the classic family uh, environment where reference planes and dimension lines are the main focus. An important step is to select the correct work plane. The work plane is like our canvas where I will place out our adaptive point and reference points that will form the cross section. So what I've done so far is to use the reference points tool and place out a reference points on the work plane. Once placed, I select the reference points and make it adaptive. So adaptive points are modified reference points that are used in designing an adaptive component in the conceptual design environment. Adaptive points can be used for component placement or shape handles. Keep adding those reference points. Important to make the points posted to another point because we want all the points to connect together and if moving the adaptive point, every point is moving with it. We host a point to another point by placing the point on top of the other point. And when you do it, you will get the error message that just come up on the screen. So before placing the reference point, I set the work plane on the reference points that the new reference point is hosted to. This will decide the direction the reference point can move. So the work plan I just selected gives me the desired moving direction for the reference points as showcased with the pink line. And since this reference point is hosted to another reference point, it will subject to the position of the host point. But very important to pay attention to the selected work plan. When all our points have been placed out, I will draw lines between points marked with the green line in my sketch. The closed loop of lines or splines will make it possible to create a solid form when extruding it in the host family later on. Okay, so points and lines are all done. Next is, well, since we do want this wall to be parametric, meaning I would like to be able to change the numerical values, for example, the width at the top or bot or thickness in the main project. So when changing the numerical values, the wall is changing geometry. If I want that, I need to set up parameters. I have opened up the family type box. So far, I've created a height parameter, which is the total height for the wall, thickness for the bot part, and a slope distance, which will determine how much the wall will slope, as well as a thickness for the top part. Slope height distance is the distance for the small slope part on the top of the wall. Uh, I type in and some numerical values important for otherwise I would not have been able to associate them to our points. So I will add an x height and an x slope height distance. These are just the same number but with a negative value. So I need to use the formula and multiply height and slope height distance with a minus one value. Since these are parameters that are at the mercy of other values and are not editable for the end user, I place them in the data type category other. Parameter that are that uh, is changeable, I place in the dimension category. Next is to connect the parameters to the geometry. So when marking a point, I can control the offset value from the host point 
and as you remember, important when I placed out the points that the work plane was set correctly, so the point is moving in the desired direction. So there is a little button on the right when marking a point that says associate. I press it and find the correct parameter to link it together. And that was the last parameter connected. Finished with the cross section. Let's uh, open up a new adaptive family template. This is where the retaining wall will be created before loading it into the main uh, Revit project. So I load in uh, our cross section in the new family, making it a nested component. But okay, so I, I need to check out the always vertical option for the section family. We load it back in again and we close that family down. So now I need to insert points from Excel to represent the top line or curve for our retaining wall. I will not go into detail on how to create this Dynamo script. I've already done that. Link is in the description. So this script import coordinates for the top curve on our retaining wall from a specified Excel. I will just use Dynamo player. We select the Excel document where the points with the coordinates are. And we change the sheet name that is inside the Excel document. We hit run and back to the 3D view in Revit. Let's uh, hide the reference points. Don't need them now, making our 3D view a little cleaner. So we select the spline and divide the path, creating nodes with a fixed distance between them. So nodes are applied to denote the position of the points of placement for components. The components here will be our cross section and the connection point will be between the node and the adaptive point in the nested family. I have found the nested family in the project browser and placed it out on one of the nodes that is on the spline. I then use the repeat tool to copy the nested family on all the nodes along the curve. So I select the cross section and hit the repeat tool. And as you can see, all of 100 nodes on the plan have got a family placed on it. I select all the cross section and hit create form. Let's see what pops out. Yeah, so that didn't work. What I need to do is break it up into smaller pieces. So we're gonna mark these cross sections and try again. And that works perfectly. So we're going to do that all along our spline. And hit create form, that works too. I'm going to mark the remaining profiles to see if it's possible to create a form. So let's uh, get um, the last one. And we hit create form. And yes, we got an error message. So when the spline becomes too long and the geometry a bit advanced, the error message might be a problem going forward. So we're gonna again split it up into smaller sections and create the form. And that works perfectly. So our sloped advanced wall with varying thickness is created. The last step here will be adding parameters and connecting them to the nested family. Because as of now, the end user in the Revit main project does not have access to the parameters created in the nested family or the profile family. So we're going to create the same parameters once again and associate them to the nested family.
the wall is finished and loaded into the Revit main project, time to flex it, meaning changing numerical values in the wall's parameters to see if it behaves as we intended. So we change the height, that works, uh, we change the thickness for the bot, and let it load, yeah, you can see the wall is, is expanding in the bot area. You adjust the, sh the slope height distance, and let's check the slope distance. Yeah, the slope uh, corrected itself with a new numerical value. Let's uh, adjust the height back. So now we're going to place our retaining wall correctly. So I have placed out reference objects with the help of a Dynamo script. Link is in the description. The reference objects will help me place the wall correctly. So I'm going into the top view to place it. And I'm just going to drag it in place for more accurate. Maybe I would uh, done it in 2D. So that concludes this tutorial. Be sure to like and subscribe for more fun videos. I'll see you later. Thank you for watching.